Good morning. We're glad to have you. Glad you could join us. Let's start by singing What Can Wash Away My Sin. This song is a question and answer song. It starts with a question and then we go to the answer. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's the shape of a cross. It reminds us of the blood of Jesus. And that's huge. Yeah, it is huge. Gold. It's not the word this book. It's just the blood. Jesus loves even me. We'll sing it the right way the first time with the words that are there. I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Oops, I should have turned the page, shouldn't I? It's the same thing twice. Now we're going to do the chorus again, but when it says me, we're going to put in your names. Adrian, Evander. I am so glad that Jesus loves Adrian, Jesus loves Evander, Jesus loves Bronson. I am so glad that Jesus loves Evie, Jesus loves Eve and Elijah. We have just enough students to do it, don't we? Five students and there's five times in that song. All right. All glory to Jesus. All glory to Jesus, begotten of God, the great I am is He. Creator, sustainer, but wonder of all, the Lamb of Calvary. To think that the guardian of planets in space, the shepherds of the stars, is tenderly leading the church of His love by hands with crimson scars. The King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, He reigns in glory now. Sorry, someday He is coming, Earth's kingdom to claim, and every knee shall bow, and every knee shall bow. Good. All right. Um, Adrian, do you want to move your chair back and away from me, Vander, that way? You can maybe take off your mask and be more comfortable or sit in that chair back there so that you can not have to be all hot if you want. If you, oh, want you can be all we spread need to get out. You need pictures of us. You have new ones. Okay, maybe today after I teach our lesson we can take some new pictures of you all yeah, and, and update these a little bit. And I maybe don't know, I like nothing like that. You don't that like version? that version? No, no, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I did see Bryson yesterday. He's doing well. He's taller and he has a haircut, so he looks a little different too. And um, let's see, where's Adrian? Where, where I saw did you him. See him. There's Adrian. He's got a different haircut now too. Yeah, but uh, where's Bryson? Where's Br oh Bryson? This is Bryson right uh, here. I don't know Bronson? if you've met him yet. Bronson is inside here. No, where where did you see Bryson? I saw Bryson, like I saw Bryson at his house. When we listen to God's word, we will learn to think God's way. We will grow in Him each day, if His word we will obey. When we listen to God's word, we will know His holy way. We will live for Him each day. I saw Xavier yesterday, too. And we've got to take Addison off now. She graduated out of our class. She's in Miss Francie's class now. So I do have to update that, don't I? Remind me, when I'm done teaching, remind me and I'll take out my phone and take pictures of you and print out some new ones. That's right. All right, last week we left off with Moses and God had told him to go to Pharaoh and Moses said, I can't speak, I can't go. And um, he decided um, to send Aaron with Moses. God said, I'll let Aaron go with you and he can speak. So Moses went to his father-in-law, Jethro, and told Jethro, I am ready to go back to Egypt and 
um, I want to go see if my family's still alive. I, I haven't seen my family in 40 years. So Jethro said, go ahead, you can take your family, you can, you can go back to Egypt. And as Moses was going back to Egypt, he met his brother Aaron. Aaron was coming to talk to him. And Aaron came to tell him, the Pharaoh that was mad at you, he's dead and gone, there's a new Pharaoh, come back and you know, see the rest of the family. And so they got to talk and Moses told Aaron, God told me to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let the Israelites go. So Aaron was excited that God was going to be working. As soon as Moses made it back to Egypt, he called for a meeting with all the leaders of each, uh, the Israelites, all the heads of the tribes. Now, remember, they're servants and slaves. They're not their own free men. They can't just do and do whatever they want. But they were able to meet with Moses, and Moses told them about God coming to him with that burning bush and how God had turned his rod into a snake and how God was going to let the people go. God was going to make a way for the Israelites to leave Egypt. And they were pretty excited that God was working. God had heard their prayer, and God was going to let them be free. Well, Moses went before Pharaoh with Aaron, and Moses told the Pharaoh, God has told us to come away from Egypt and to worship him out of Egypt and Pharaoh said, what? Who's your God? Your God is nobody. Who are you, Moses? You're nothing. And he said, no, they, they can't go. In fact, after Moses left, the Pharaoh told the leaders of all the slaves to make their work even harder, to make the Israelites have to work even more, to work harder. He made it where they would have to, they were busy making the bricks out of clay there in Egypt. And he, um, Pharaoh said, let them go find their own straw to make the bricks. You have to mix the straw in with the clay so the bricks wouldn't be too hard. So he said, let them find their own straw now. But they still have to make the same number of bricks. They can't make less bricks. They still have to work just as hard, even a little harder. So they don't have time to say, let's go away. You know, they shouldn't have time to say, we want to leave. Don't give them any free time. They have to work harder. And the masters demanded that the slaves find the straw and still make the same number of bricks. And the masters were more cruel and they were very demanding. And so life was even worse for the Israelites. Instead of being better, it Why? got worse. And the leaders came to Moses and said, you've made things even worse than it was before. It would have been better if you had not talked to Pharaoh. You should just go back where you were. Leave us alone. This is not working out. You've made it worse for us, more miserable. And so Moses prayed to the Lord. He said, Lord, you told me to go talk to the Pharaoh, and the Pharaoh has made it even worse. And now I'm like a, a stink to the people of Israel. They don't want me here. I, I'm like a bad word to them. And God talked to Moses for quite a while. God said, I am the Lord. I am the God of, remember, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Isaac. And I will lead the people out of Egypt into the land of Canaan, the land that I promised. And I will be with them. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And then I will make Pharaoh let you go. And God kept saying, I will, I will, I will. God was making these promises to Moses and saying, I will be with you and I will do this. So Moses had to go back to the Pharaoh and say, let my people go. God said, let my people go. And what did Pharaoh say? No, no, no your people don't need to go. So... God told um, Moses to have Aaron throw his rod down and show his power. And he, remember what he did last time? He made the rod turn into a snake. Well, he did that in front of Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was amazed that the rod had turned into a snake. But Pharaoh had many magicians, you know, people who could do magic. And they threw down their rods, and their rods turned into snakes also. They were able to do tricks, and they were able to make snakes on the ground too. But then God made Aaron's snake eat up all the other snakes. So there was only one snake left, and Aaron picked it up, and it turned back into his rod. 
And that wasn't all. God, or Moses told Pharaoh, we need to go. And because you refuse to let us go, God is going to make all the water, the Nile River, the whole river is going to turn to blood. And they went out by the river, and Moses spoke, and the water turned to blood. And not just the water in the river, but also, the Bible says, all the other little rivers and ponds, and even the water pitchers in the house and the water even buckets. Even the ocean? No, not the ocean. This is just okay. right here in Egypt. Oh, okay. And then, even, their, even the water they had in their house turned to blood. Mm -hmm. Even the pitchers and bowls of water that they had already pulled out of the river. The, yes, the Bible says all the fish died, and it stank. I mean, between the yucky water and between the dead fish, Egypt began to stink. But the Bible says that Pharaoh hardened his heart. He didn't say... Go, he said, <clears throat> I'm not letting those people go. So after that, Moses came to Pharaoh and said, God says, let my people go. And if you don't let them go, he's going to send frogs all over the land. There's going to be frogs. And Pharaoh, he didn't care. Let the frogs come. The Bible says there were so many frogs that even when they rolled over in bed, they rolled over on frogs, and that when they went to make their bread, they were kneading their bread, and there would be frogs in the way when they were trying to knead the bread. And the Bible says when they went to put their bread in the oven, there were frogs in the oven. There were frogs everywhere, yes. And that stunk also because as the frogs died, they stank. And finally, after a few days of frogs, they did take away the curse. God did take away the curse. But all the frogs died, and they were all piled up, these dead frogs. It was thick piles of frogs, dead, smelly frogs. That's, that's disgusting. So Moses again said, Pharaoh, God has already done, turned your water. He's already made your water to blood. He's already sent frogs. Let my people go. And Pharaoh said, no. So God told Moses to strike the ground with his rod. And the dust of the ground turned into little mice, little bugs that get on you and make you itch and bite you. And they, they drink your blood and they, they make you itchy. Oh, little like mice. mosquitoes? Worse than mosquitoes because they don't just bite you and get off. They stay on you until you pick them off. And they were lice everywhere. They were on the people and they were on the animals. Why on the poor servants? Why on the servants? Yeah. It was on all the Egyptians. And on their animals. Didn't even, the servants didn't even do nothing. These aren't the servants, honey. These are the Egyptians. Oh. So Pharaoh just yeah. hardened his heart, the Bible God's says. God's people, did they get lice on them? Actually, God's people had frogs, God's people had lice, and God's people had bloody water. But after this plague, these are called the plagues. We call them the ten great plagues, the plagues of Egypt. These three plagues happened to the Israelites, too. But after this one, the Israelites didn't have the rest of the plagues on them. But during all of this time, Pharaoh just hardened his heart. Then the fourth thing, because Pharaoh would not let them go, God sent flies. Oh, horrible flies. Swarms of flies. You know how they are when they're buzzing around. They, they were swarms. Now, they didn't bother Moses. They didn't bother Aaron or any of the Israelites. Flies were in their clothes, in their food. You know how it is? Mary was eating a bagel this week, and she had to leave it for a second. And she even put a napkin over it, and she went and did what she had to do. And she came back to her bagel. It had jelly on it. And when she came back, there, was, there was a fly on it. And she lifted her napkin, and the fly flew away, fly. but she, did, she didn't want to eat that. Yeah, it so, okay, wait, don't talk. So... They were in their food and in their eyes, and, and they were swarming all over the place. Like they, the, the Egyptians were suffering torment. Did I put up the wrong picture? I believe that's the flies. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Thank you, Evander. I did put up the locusts, the grasshoppers. Here's the flies. I'm sorry. So they, the flies were swarming them. And Pharaoh told Israel they could go and worship um, outside the land, they could worship in the land of Egypt. And Moses said, no, we can't worship here in Egypt. God said, let's go out of Egypt. And Pharaoh wouldn't let them go. All right, so now, God removed the flies. 
And then put grasshopper. Yep. Yeah. Next was a disease on the animals. Their animals started to die. The animals who did the work, did a lot of the work for them, died. And Israel, Israel's animals were safe. Just the Egyptians' animals died. And oh, okay. then Pharaoh still said, no, you can't go. So then God sent boils on their skin. God told Moses to take the dust of the ground and throw it up in the air and it turned to boils on all the people. Boils are Even are big. Like to, boils are big red sores. They swell up and they burn. And then they were all over where it was painful to sit. It was painful. And the boils were not only on the people, they were also on the animals that were still living. The boils were boils were very painful. And God hardened Pharaoh's heart even more. He would not let Israel go. God did? God hardened Pharaoh's heart and made him. You'll see, it. God will work it all out. God is showing his great power. But why did he harden his heart? For his own purpose, for what his is, own reason. What is harder? Hard, you know what it means to get hard, like doesn't bend, doesn't change. Someone who has a soft heart is willing to change their mind and be... They are workable, but someone who is hard and set doesn't change their mind. And that's how Pharaoh is getting. He won't change his mind. So here comes the seventh plague. God told Moses to warn Pharaoh that there was going to be a hailstorm. And this was going to be the worst hailstorm ever. The, wait, Elijah, please don't. If you have a question, raise your hand. God warns the people through Moses to come in out of the field. He told all the Israelites, get inside. There's going to be bad hail. But anybody who didn't believe God and stayed outside, they were going to be hailed on. So the Israelites, they brought their animals in and they went in their house. And those caught in the hailstorm would die. There was thunder and lightning. The Bible says the lightning was like fire, balls of fire. And things started on fire. And the hail was big and it killed whatever was outside. It killed some of the plants. And it killed some people and it killed some more animals. Trees were shattered. Crops were destroyed. The vegetation is flattened by the hail. Whoops, I didn't show you the picture of the hail. Balls of ice, hard balls. Is the sun too bright? Yeah. Maybe we can adjust the blind. Yeah, the sun is right on there. Thank you. Um, so next, God told Moses to go to Pharaoh again. And of course, Pharaoh said, no, he wasn't gonna let the people go. And God sent the locusts, the, the grasshoppers. All right. Now, what do grasshoppers eat? What happens with the grasshoppers? They don't eat the people. They do eat plants. And it was the time of the barley harvest, and the locusts ate all the barley and all the flax. Now, the wheat, there was still wheat alive, but all the barley and flax is eaten, eaten alive. Um, actually, I, I said it wrong. The, the hail destroyed the barley and flax. The locusts ate the wheat, what was left, and it ate the rest of the trees until there was no vegetation left. All right, this destroyed a lot of it. This finished it off. The locusts ate whatever was left. And if you've ever read any of the Little House in the Prairie books, one of the books talks about when they had locusts come through and devoured their crops, devoured their wheat, and they had, I mean, just a swarm. I mean, it made the sky dark. There were so many locusts outside. And that was, you know, just a couple, well, a hundred years ago. This happened thousands of years ago. A hundred years ago was before you were born, but still not that long ago. So locusts have been known to do things like that. Swarm in, make it all dark, and just eat everything. Well, that was the eighth plague. Here comes the ninth. Not a green thing was left, but then, Moses went to Pharaoh again, and he, he warned him. He said, now God is going to send darkness, and it's going to be so dark that you won't be able to see one thing. And Pharaoh got very angry at Moses and told Moses, I don't ever want to see you again. If you come back, I will kill you. And Moses said, you're right. You're never going to see me again. I'm not coming back. You will not see me again. And God sent that ninth plague was darkness. The Bible says for three days, nobody even left their house. It was so dark. And the darkness was so thick. The Bible says that you could feel it. It was maybe like a blanket. It was 
thick and heavy darkness you couldn't see. So they couldn't work. They couldn't. So for three days, all the slaves got to rest. They didn't have to work. And that's good. Yes, that was good. And they didn't. And they didn't have darkness where they were. All right. Then. And let me move this. You mean the Israelites? Yeah. They did not have to work during that time. They were able to rest. And then God told Moses about the last plague. The last plague was going to be the worst of all. Yes, God told Moses to have the Israelites get ready, get packed, be ready to move, to leave Egypt. Pack up all your goods, pack up all your things. And then, choose a lamb. Choose a male lamb that's one year old, a young, healthy, strong male, one without any broken legs or scra scratches or anything, blindness or anything, find a perfect lamb. Each family should find a lamb. And at twilight, that means when the sun is starting to go down, the family should kill the lamb, save some of the blood in a bowl, and then they're to cook the lamb, roast it, and at midnight they were supposed to eat it. And, yeah, have a lamb feast. They were supposed to eat the lamb I, I said they were going to eat it at midnight. I'm sorry. They were going to eat it at twilight. And at midnight, God was going to come. First of all, the, the father of each house was supposed to take some of the blood and take a hyssop branch. This is kind of what hyssop looked like with that purple leaf, purple flower on it. Take some hyssop, put some blood on it, and they were supposed to put it on their That's ketchup. Door. That's ketchup. Yes. No. They were supposed to mark it on their door. On the top and on the sides. And then, and then they were supposed to eat their dinner. So here we are. Here's the door. Here's the hyssop branch. Yes. Here's the father painting the doorway with the lamb's blood. The perfect lamb. A healthy young lamb. Blood is spread out on the door. And then they had to eat their dinner. The Bible said to eat their dinner with their shoes on, their sandals on, with their belts girded around their waist, ready to go. So they ate standing up. They weren't even supposed to sit down when they ate. They ate standing up. And then at midnight, that night, the Lord came. in every door that had blood on the door, God passed over. Right. What was that? Passed over. Oh, yeah, like go, he go left. over it. He, right, he went over that door and didn't go in there. Any door that did not have the blood on the door, the oldest child, the firstborn of each family, was killed that night. Wait. The Pharaoh's oldest son, the one who was the prince, who was supposed to be the next Pharaoh, was killed. The oldest son of each servant oh, this is was horrible. would be killed. I, I Any, yep. If you see a door without blood, then that oldest firstborn would be killed. Well, the Pharaoh woke up in the night, and he found out that his son was dead. And he, of course, was furious. He called for the Egyptian or for the Israelites to go, to get out. And they did. Moses told all the people, let's go, it's time to leave. And they were able to leave Egypt. So, this blood on the door is a picture of the blood of the that land. the Lord Jesus Christ shed. How see, see how the blood makes a, like a cross on the sides and on the top? Wait, I it makes, see it. If you connect the, the blood on the sides and from the top, it reminds us of the blood. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He shed his blood so that we don't have to pay the penalty of our sin. This lamb shed his blood so that the people wouldn't be killed, so that the firstborn wouldn't be killed in each, in each house, this lamb. So Jesus is the perfect lamb who takes away our sin. We can either try to pay for our sin ourselves, or we can let Jesus' blood take away our sin. There's only one way to get rid of sin. We can't wash it off by being good. We cannot wash it off by going to church and by looking all perfect. 
The only way to take care of sin exactly. is by exactly. having Jesus' blood wash away our sin. That is the only way. So the Israelites, the Israelites fled. Here they are all packed up. They grabbed their stuff and they left Egypt. There was about two million people. Two million people. That is a lot of people. And they escaped out of Egypt. The Egyptians were glad to see them go. Glad to go. All right. So for many, for many years they traveled. They were going back to Canaan. Unfortunately, it's going to take them many years. And next week we'll talk about the next leader they have. We talked about Moses. Moses was a leader for the Israelites for 40 years. And then the next leader will be, we'll find out next week who our next leader will be. How did Moses die? He just died old. He just went up in the mountain and he died. He just, yep, he was just old and he probably just laid down and the Lord took him to heaven. All right. Now, any other questions about Moses or anything? All right, before we have our review game, okay, do not talk to my job, Evie. Let's see. I'm going to give you these little numbers. You can come stick them up on the right plate. They're numbers. So if you don't know what the picture is, you can just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So. And ten. Hmm. How about this one? Um, um, Bronson, why don't you come put this? Do you know what these are supposed to be on here? Boils. Boils, right. Mr. Allen, could you be ready? Boils. Where's the boils? I can see the right? Bars. Yep. Yep. Just set that right there. All right. Evander, what is this? I mean, I'm saying Evander. I'm sorry, Evander. Go ahead. I was saying Evander, looking at Elijah. That's number one. Yep. The water to blood. The bump has to. Stay. I thought that was not first. Yep. The water to blood was first. Okay. I'm giving you number seven. Can you tell what that is? Because that's how old he is. Come on. Oh, that how, that's right. You just had your birthday. That's how old you are. I was trying to the Seven is way over right the hail. And those black things are supposed to be hail on this. All right. And the lightning and the thunder. All right. Adrian, number five. Yep. The sick cattle. Um, Edie, number three. What are those little black things? I don't know. You told me. <laughs> number three. And so the little lights. I'm the yeah, but he didn't quit. All right. Um, Bronson, we're back to you. Uh, Come on. Those aren't blobs. Those do not look like frogs. <laughs> oh, I see them now. They're frogs. Kind of, sort of. Adrian, come back for number eight. And what? Can I do nine? I you may do nine. I want to do four. Eyeballs. Yep, I'm all the darkness. All right, Evie, number four. What is on four? Flies. Flies. All right, when I ask you a question and you answer it right, you can go find a frog. All the frogs are, are in the front half of the room. You don't have to go past the room divider. What's that? Yes, we have enough for everybody. And um, find your frog, and you can take your frog home with you if you wish. All right. Elijah, who did Moses talk to about letting God's people leave Egypt? Who did he say, God said, let my people go? Who did he talk to? He talked to the Lord. Yeah, he, uh, he did talk to the Lord, and then he had to go to, who did he say, let my people go? I'm trying to show you this picture. Moses went to who? Who did he have to talk to? The, the Pharaoh. That's right, the Pharaoh. Go find a frog. Evie, what was Pharaoh's answer to God's command? Let the Israelites go. And oh, right, his answer was N O no. There you go. Have oh. a frog. Oh, I love it. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, they're not very hard, Can are they? <laughs> no, Bronson's Nick. Number three. Bronson, name one of the plagues. Anyone? Um, darkness. Darkness. All right, go find a frog. Evander, what did God want the Israelites to do so their homes would be passed over by the last plague? What did God tell them to do? He told them to put blood on the, put blood on the doors. Oh, I'm gonna find yeah, a hard one. And There's not any hard ones, I don't think. And Adrian, who rescued the Israelites? Who who made uh, it possible for the Israelites to go? Who made Pharaoh so mad that he finally said, "Go"? Who worked on Pharaoh's heart? Yep, God. That's right. 
This is just a question for everybody. You can just answer out loud. Is there anything too hard for God? No. No, there is nothing too He's hard for God. Adrian, um, I'll give you a couple clues. There's some in the front. If there's nothing. Well, there's one back there, too. All right. Now. All right. Now, the Israelites, they, they celebrate their Passover. I Remember I said that the... Lord passed over, God passed over the homes that had the blood. God told them, Elijah, God told the Israelites, Evie, God told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover every year. Do you know that the Israelites, the Jews, still celebrate the Passover meal? They still, they clean their house, they cook a lamb, they roast it up. And they eat eat it with bitter herbs, and, and they sell it. They don't put blood on the door anymore because God already passed over them. And they're celebrating the fact that God passed over them and saved them, rescued them from from the Egyptians. God freed them. And boys and girls, if you know the Lord, if God has rescued you and freed you from your sin, we have every reason to celebrate and be happy. I don't God, know if I do. Well, Me God either. God will let you know in your heart. If you need to, or if you have or haven't. I don't hear. I have. No, you don't. He won't talk to you, but he will. Yeah, I don't he hear. will let I you know. Listening. Yes. I'm listening. All right. God is not going to talk to you in a deep voice in the middle of the night, but he will make you. He'll send the Holy Spirit to either make you feel convicted, like, oh, I, I need to take care of this. I am not saved. I need to talk to someone. I need to get saved. Yes, Adrian. I'm in the fog. You're, you're what in the frog? Found you found frog. another frog. Yeah, we have a couple more. And there's. Can we just pull them out? Yes. Okay. I have just sit one. down. Let's not worry about the frogs. I we're gonna. One that we're okay, we're gonna close in prayer. But I just want you to think about in your own heart. If you've asked the Lord to save you from your sin, just like the Israelites covered were covered with the blood, you need to have your sin covered with His blood. All right, let's pray. Close your eyes, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the payment of our sin. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for providing a way for us to, to go to heaven and to have our sin taken care of. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Now.